Uh, welcome to tonight's Appropriation Committee meeting on uh, April 24th. On the agenda tonight, uh, we have our open forum for any public comment, uh, approval of meeting minutes, uh, fiscal year 20 Appropriation Committee uh, discussion uh, report, the report discussion and approval. And uh, we're also going to go over in that, we're also going to review the articles and hopefully approve the articles tonight. And, uh, and that's it. And we adjourn. And we're going to try to vote on the report tonight? Yes. Is that, is that <coughs> Okay. Yes. Well, the agenda says a report finalization. So Great. That, that does include uh, uh, voting on it. So what we'd like to go over first, um, the, uh, is there any public comment? I see there isn't. So we'll go on to the next item, uh, which is going over the report. No minutes, correct. That was the next item. Uh, do we have any minutes to approve? I had sent one out a week ago that we oh. didn't get the last time. We, okay. we ran late and kind of wanted to get out of here. So We'll do that at the end. Okay. okay. Fine. So we have a good draft report that everyone has in front of them. Uh, and it is a report that recommends approval of the budget. In conclusion, this budget is compliant with the law and with the financial policies of the town. It provides additional resources to town departments, including the schools, police, and fire that are needed to manage the costs associated with community growth and does so while limiting uh, the existing tax base to an average of 2.5% is the conclusion. And it starts out with the Appropriations Committee has reviewed and recommends the proposed budget of $90,200. Zero two five two hundred fifty two dollars. Did that go up? I didn't think we had hit the ninety million mark. We did. We did in like version, like four versions ago. Oh, okay. See how much I've been paying attention. I've been <laughs> in the weeds. I haven't been looking up. Right. Again. Any um, impact from the um, board select meeting? Any changes to this as a result? No, not really. Okay. Um, I just thought I'd ask. Did anybody, <laughs> did anybody uh, see? I know Todd was there. Yeah. Were you, the, were you there? Did you? I'm the one who presented. presented yes, it. Yes, so the board did asking. respond to your comment about the sidewalks mm -hmm. and actually reduced the sidewalk, uh, the decision on the sidewalks by about half. And that does not affect the operating budget because that was going to be debt. And that would not have showed up until 2021. Yeah, that was definitely an interesting discussion. But although I guess we we kind of tossed it around, that wasn't officially we were going to bring it up. But right. it was one of the members of the appropriation committee obviously brought it brought it up. But it was really uh, kind of the discussion kind of went into because I guess we should have specified which roads we thought should be paved and which should not. But in general, it was really the idea of breaking it into small into a smaller components rather than which ones and yeah. that got to be a little bit of discussion and I clarified that that it was we definitely discussed brought up had the idea of, does it have to be 1.8 million dollars at this point so but then there was a lively discussion and I did see based on where people lived in town which sidewalks they thought should be paved and which shouldn't it was. I'm sure it was not based on that. <laughs> well, uh, but, but what it did, <laughs> it sort of was. <laughs> but what it, well, that's not, not many data points. You don't have a lot of data points about, for that. I, I said, in the Wild Road, they're all in agreement they should be on Wild Road, and I happen to live right off a of Wild Road. Mm -hmm. So, But the, what did change as a result of that was the debt graph on page 20. Okay. That shows that third line of what is going to be considered by the town meeting came down a little bit and uh, reflects that lower debt stream going out due to the decision to shave about $770,000, $740,000 off that in debt, which would have an impact of, I think, about $120,000 a year in several for several years. Out. Okay. Interest in principal payments. Interest in principal, right. So Ben, I still I, haven't gotten the, uh, I haven't gotten it yet. Okay. Oh. I certainly have, I have more comment along the lines of that particular article, but it doesn't really pertain to the report that we're talking about, so I'll save until later. Um, but in general, I think uh, I'm happy with the report. Yeah. So I have a question on page 15. 
um, we have a column about increase, which in previous years we have filled in, which aren't filled in yet, but I wonder if there was an intention to fill those in. So this is a chart on the bottom of page 15. Right. You see how it says prior unused levy and it says increase versus 2018? So the top half of that? Those numbers aren't filled in? Oh, that to do the math from the one to the other. Yeah. You're right, that math is not done there. So, so there's eight places, or at least four I places, it. or eight okay. places. Okay. Right. That, yeah. that, that was intentional, um, because there was uh, a different denominator being used, because as you compare with how the, the statutory 2.5% is calculated, it, you know, one number is calculated against the um, the tax levy, the actual tax levy, the other against the levy limit. So. You know, if, if you use the same percentage and have them all add down, that statutory statutory two and a half percent, the percentage is actually it looks different. It's not two and a half percent, so we thought that added some additional confusion. So those were um, right. purposely deleted, so the percentages down at the bottom could add down in a way that, that made sense. So in the so should we just take the headers off? Yeah, we could certainly certainly so do that. Doesn't so when we did that before, it was actually not. Accurate? Is that what you're saying? I think it was misleading. It, was, okay. it okay. was misleading before, and if you had summed them, they didn't sum. So here's the. It doesn't. I, would, I wouldn't try to say this to everybody, but if you have a one-year-old and a three-year-old, after a year, the one-year-old gets 100% older, and the three-year-old gets 33% older. But collectively, they don't get they, they don't get <laughs> seventy percent older, older, right? So, so it's it's that thing where the denominators were different, and it was. I think was, he stays up at night thinking that. No, I don't. I, don't. <laughs> I swear to God, that was the best one I could come up with. The children of different ages, each age a year, and they each age by a percentage, but those percentages don't sum to how much older the family becomes. But I don't know if it needs to sum, does it? Well, we had some confusion because it didn't sum. So we we're looking for a presentation that that creates the least right. do confusion. We, do we have this kind of information about what the change is um, anywhere in the, in the presentation? E I Let's see. We present this in so many ways. Norman. Norman, let's, uh, you let's know, we don't have the percentage change anywhere else. So we'll certainly add that on page 13. There are some percentages there for the total. Yeah, but those are, it's not for that, right? It's not for that percentage. It's not, what is it showing? I mean, we could put a dollar amount instead of a percentage there for a dollar change. That might be, yeah, that's a percentage if that's what's making you nervous. Okay. Just so people can see. Is that easy enough to get to? Oh, yeah. Well, you can just pull thing. You can at least okay. do the first, the, the 2020 okay. column. So you want to undo those deletes, I guess. Yep, I can add that. And while you're looking at that, on page 17, I just really like the description there. Just want to let you guys know I thought that was a nice description of the um sorry which page 17. 17. great yeah we uh we had beautiful color graphs and then we realized we were going to be printing in black and white yes we had an issue too <laughs> and no one could read <laughs> the graphs that we had done so we had to go back and rebuild them all in different in shades different, of gray yeah. I also see you added both for the OPEB as well as the um, other trust funds how we're investing. Yes. Yes. So I think that's good information. It goes to our risk profile mm -hmm. and where we stand today. And I think people may have opinions on that. Or I was going to say they may have opinions, that. just so you know, yeah. potentially uh, open so yourself up to opinions. Well, we had this discussion last night with the selectmen, and we mm -hmm. brought it up and. You know, if you invested the OPEB, as it stands now, the OPEB will be fully funded at the $400,000 level in the year 2100. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming we're investing in a lot of stock. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And if you assume we're, if we just move to investing in government bonds, it would be some many, many decades beyond right. that where right. we would be there. And in fact, we may lose ground to inflation. We may never, we, it's possible we could never get there mm -hmm. if right. we just uh, invested in stock. So, on, on the other hand, last night, the thing that I also heard was from the auditor in saying that our OPEB reserves, uh, we are in the top 10% in the state. So while we may not be keeping pace with necessarily the obligations that we're, uh, that, that we're accruing right now, we're doing better than most. So that's when you say top 10% in the state, is that the, out of 200 cities and towns? So I have, I have the report. 351. Yeah. But, but it, it's not complete data. So this actuary represents very many cities and towns probably dozens, and it's probably representative. And with our funding level, almost everybody is below 10%. And we're just barely at that top of the low group. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's true. Yeah. We're so, you know, I mean, certainly, certainly, you know, we need to keep an eye on where we should be, but at the same time, you know, we shouldn't be walking around, you know, uh, with our shoulders shrugged, you know, saying, oh, you know, we're not keeping up. I mean, I think we're doing a good job. We're, we're doing this, so. this whole movement just started a few years That's ago. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, wasn't there a concern they were going to, like, require us to fully fund it? Mm -hmm. that, that there was legislation that That's, has been yeah, proposed? Yeah, still out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is yeah. what happened with the pension liability. Mm -hmm. I'd also look at, though, um, you know, if we're, if we're in that top 10%, and we are where we are, if they do go and require full funding, first of all, it's probably a long shot that they would do that uh, if, if the majority of towns or municipalities are in this position. Um, and if they were to do that, then I mean, they know they would be putting everybody behind the eight ball. Um, and I don't think that there could be anything, you know, saying it needs to be done in the next three years or five years, I think it would have to be an incremental, uh, you know, working, working toward that goal. Um, so they so could do the same thing they did to put the retirement plan is set a, a, set 30, a goal date and then year, they adjust it. Date. You know, so that's a likely. So, yeah. you know, based upon yeah. how, you know, the, the different retirement systems <clears throat> were handling it. So, and so at, certainly at, they would get that feedback. At an 8.7% funding rate, we may be in the top 10%, but nobody's very far behind us. We're all still at near the starting line on this thing. So, so we are with the cohort. We're not, we're not the worst in class, if that's your point, and it's certainly true. Depends on if you're looking at the difference as a percentage, or... <laughs> <laughs> it's also, is, it, is that a good thing that no one's, you know, funding it? Again, this is... Uh, this is well, a tough sell. Five, five years ago, when we had this discussion at town meeting, it was like, well, if we don't do it, since other towns aren't doing it, maybe something will happen where we don't have to fund it. Right. But I think over the last couple of years, the state has made it clear that option is not going to happen. Right. It would be, as as you were saying, might be mandated. There might require mandatory levels, mm -hmm. you know, uh, payments. So I would say there's probably up, so it's leaning in that direction rather than it'll. And there's probably three scenarios, right? So one is what you're suggesting, that we'd have a target date 30 years out, and we'd all have to make mandatory contributions. The second one would be that the state would take half a loaf and take over the teacher portion of this, as they have for teacher pensions, which would cut our bill by probably about 60, 65%. And the third would be if we ever have national health care, this as a liability substantially goes away. So. Pick, pick your likelihood on any of those three paths, uh, but I think those are probably the three ways it could shake out. If we vote for Bernie. <laughs> well, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go away. It goes away from us having yeah. to pay the town. Yeah. To the town. Right. As a town, yeah. we write the check here. <laughs> yeah, the town has a bigger, less efficient right. check, yes. Well, the language, the last paragraph of that section, um, I feel is pretty soft, and I think we were suggesting a more direct we think we need to fund this higher. Um, and I just wonder if the other committee members have to say. Which page are you on? On page 23. Bottom of 23. 
Well, uh, we made it more strong in our, in our opening summary. Our opening yeah. summary. Yeah. I've seen Allison pop up. <laughs> I'm like, who's Allison? It's, Allison's I, a lazy I, I potato. Yeah. That's I, I, all I know. <laughs> yeah. Wife does not like that email address. Mm. I had one thought, and of course I can't get back to that. So we're okay with how the OPEC language is in Yes. Okay. On the summary, how we added back on page two or three. Yeah. Okay. Back and forth on this. It's okay. On page uh, three, where we mentioned that there would be a burden, the overall concern, and we mentioned that the limits on. Likewise, while well, restrictions on continued tax-based growth and the consideration may slow the rise in some town costs, they would definitely curb the inflow of new tax dollars. We want to call out also the, um, the new growth because you get the lump sums at the beginning. Or is that just implied? I was kind of going back and forth. On. Call it out in what way? How would just especially new growth, or just because you're seeing such a yeah okay. Because not only do you don't see the future tax, but you also don't get that the new growth. Yeah. yeah. So we say right there that new growth is expected to be yep. is estimated conservatively at two million dollars. That's two paragraphs above it, right? Right. It's where I just highlighted in blue. Yeah. Should be shown. I was just thinking, do we want to highlight it in the paragraph below? We express I think our concerns. So, I, I, yeah, I think since. The people who are looking at this don't have this in-depth understanding. I don't think we should assume anything is implied because I think we need to call. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a bit of a windfall. So I right. Think just, so yeah. but don't forget also this the we give a presentation at the you know where we go. This is one yeah. of the big topics that we talk right. you know that we talk about because that is such a big uh, part of the budget decision. That's mm -hmm. the budget. So would like after where it says these forecasts where my cursor is go down one two three sentences yeah we thought that'd be so three lines point. additionally down there or likewise yeah, so it's, it's like slow the rise and sometimes they would definitely curb the inflow of new tax dollars and a reduction including a reduction or and a reduction in, in revenues from new growth well I just. Yeah. I was just thinking about it when I was reading it. From new growth? Because we're kind of talking about new growth? No, be of new growth. Of new growth. Of new growth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of new tax dollars, but of new growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, or of, yeah. Uh, or revenues of new growth, maybe. That covers How about the from instead of of? From new growth. Revenue yeah. from, from, yeah. from, yeah. from yeah. new growth, yeah. yeah. And maybe take out new tax, new before tax dollars, info of tax dollars from new growth. Just so you don't okay. say new three, three words apart. Thanks. Good. Um, something really minor. Have we checked to make sure that all the attachments we reference that they actually are the right to label correctly? Because I thought I said two two things. Talk about Appendix B. Um, if you look on page 17 and page 18. No, of course I haven't checked to see if they are both included in Appendix B. I think A is definitions and B is numbers. Um, hold on. Or do we have an A, B, and C? We have an A, B, and C. Yep, so. Um, a, so it's all part of B. Yeah, so B, yeah. A is definitions, B is the current debt, and C is a schedule of um, anticipated debt in the future. You can tell I didn't scroll down all that way yet. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with content, but can we make sure that we put everything in a justified format? before we print so that it's all 
-hmm. Justified both sides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like newspaper style. Exactly. So it kind of goes to the edges evenly. Let's let's let Ben do that because we we yeah. we shift we'll between uh, formats. Yes. Because yeah. I noticed that we had tried to do like a, a chart or a topic on every page, and it looks like we've gotten rid of that. Which I'm okay with if you guys are. I can't think we'll save people. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm the one who brought up saving paper, but I was the one putting the uh, page breaks. breaks page breaks between topics. So. <laughs> yeah, that was really it was really just not to leave a lot of white space. But yeah, uh, if yeah, you have a strong yeah, feeling about it as a group, or I just wanted to bring up that it's changed. I'm okay with that. If you guys are, we haven't checked with Pam. Let you know. Same we'll call we did. I can look it up what we did last year. I have a print in. So last year, like every um, last year's here, every chart got its own page pretty much. And we have a little description underneath it as well. So last year was not right justified. No. So like four or yeah. Yeah, each page it was a a separate topic. chart, and then we had the the description below. So our our green initiative was to to not do that. But right. If you unanimously want to do that, we can we can do that. That's why I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm, I'm just going to contradict something I said. Two weeks ago. So. <laughs> I think it makes a nice presentation. I'm just trying to see how much that changes when you don't do it that way. So you see how it was last year? Yeah. We had like education was on. The, we had a chart and then we had a description, and then you go over here in your public works, and we did that throughout oh. the entire. <coughs> The entire thing. It's probably going to add 10 pages to the. I was going to say, can we? Yeah. Can, yeah. Can we see how many pages it adds to each? So report? this was only and 50 pages last year. What's how many? Only, I said only. <laughs> yeah. And that's dual, <laughs> side, dual sided, so that's 25 it. pieces of paper yeah. or 26. Yeah. We added a whole new suite of graphs this year. Right. A whole new suite of presentations. We added text on OPEP. We added text on the pension. Uh, a lot of content there. Norman, how many copies do we bring to? Uh, to tell me 200 or? More than that. 200, 250. 250. And then the next following day we bring 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll point out that this year Norman also had to write four memos instead of one <laughs> to get us to the finish I line. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> another, another memo. <laughs> Check them out to save money. That's right. Oh, well, they're valuable. I mean, we could try without doing a separate page for each this year and see how it looks and how people react to it, if you want. Yeah. Or don't let Pam know. We try for presentation, but we're strongly committed to savings. Right. No, and I understand why we did it, and I just wanted to point out that it was, it was different. Could we mention that in the presentation? There Blunt. We go. Blunt any uh, most comments being yeah. mean. Well, I think you don't, you don't want to be. <laughs> actually, I think for the most part it. Um, it flows pretty well. I think. And it, I think yeah. the charts. We, we didn't split the tables across two pages. I mean, right. we did a little bit. Of, yeah. yeah. I think it would have to be. It would have to be, and this year, you'll notice a change to the format. We did X, Y, and Z, and we saved five pieces of paper per well, report yeah. while adding additional information. And, well, yeah, while adding additional yeah. information. And if you extrapolate this to 350 copies of the report that were provided on the desk back there, so could you say those are about 100 pages of you know, pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you can put a limb out there. This is the yeah. one that we saved. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted here to show you. <laughs> Do we put we put it online too, right? So that people don't have to print it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, I thought it was good when I, I reviewed it. Mm -hmm. Printed it out, looked at it. Yeah. I thought I liked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of good direction and a lot of good staff work there. Yeah, by, uh, thank these you. Guys and, uh, 
and a lot of uh, clear feedback and direction. So I think it worked very well, and I think we're in a good place with a good report. Yes. Do we need to vote to approve it? Just, just, this is a net that I've been talking to Norman about for a number of years. These things where we scan something in and we're inserting it into this document. I think, I don't know what page is this? Uh, nine. Can we scan these in, convert them to a PDF and put them in so it's a full page and it's, or, or do we have a copy of the original that so, we can are you in? saying we should, what I just did on page nine, where we just make the box, make it, make it a, use more of the page? Is that your idea? Well, either using more of the page or, or actually scanning that document in and making it a PDF and inserting it. So that way it's, well, so if you're taking a can whole you go page, and look at, we maximize? Can you go and look at what I'm doing right now on 9 Yep, I'm right here. I see what you're doing. Okay, is it's that showing up as you do it. Is it simpler though? Is that, is that getting us? I mean, it's better, it? but you know, when you go through, you can still see that it's a blurry, it's a blurry copy of it. Right. It's, I, I have the memo. I can easily. Uh, you know, it, it's yeah. not a big deal. It's like I say, this is, this is one of the many, you know, well, if you have it while you're beginning to make the original one, then you could. Mm -hmm. Well, no, never mind. They don't work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, by doing that, I messed up the space. If we can, moment. if we can scan it, it into PDF, back. and then use the OCR conversion mm -hmm. in the PDF, you know, then it comes out searchable and neat, and just insert it where it needs to be. If you can give us yeah. two more acronyms, but. we'll do it. How's <laughs> <laughs> that for a deal? <laughs> um, <laughs> but again. I know that I just get nitpicky on some of this stuff, and it's not—it's not a content thing, and the content is what's most important. So, as far as the report goes and the content, I'm very, very happy. Just looking for other little ways that we might be able to make it better. That's good. Good so, feedback. Appreciate that. Great. I just want to check one thing. Yeah. Right. So, on page. 63 or 62, 61, all those pages. I'm just wondering, is there anything we can do? The numbers kind of drive me batty. Unless it's just me, but I don't, I think, because the numbers are over two lines. Uh, over two pages? Oh, you're or talking the about that, or the, the wrap? Breaks? The table yeah. wrap? It's wrapping, yeah. So can we make the widths? Is it possible to make I the widths? It doesn't have it on mine. That's weird. Is that Wait, just, is what it just page me? are you on? It's not. These are the 62. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of text in there. Is that just me or is I that? I think it's just you. It's not happening on mine. You have a Mac? Who has yeah. Macs and who doesn't? I got a I have Mac. A Mac. I think it's because we're we're all looking at Google Docs and you're looking at a PDF. Okay. So just make sure that it doesn't wrap when you. Do, okay. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Yeah. I, I had to. Um, yeah. Well, I have—I don't know what Mike's seeing, but I have it wrapping because the titles in column A are long. I mean, some of these comprehensive wastewater management phase three. Once we change all those titles, this is how I see it. Oh, we don't get that. No, we're, we will not have that. That'll be—we'll check the final PDF and make I sure. Just need to I didn't even work. I'm having an issue getting. Yeah, I'm not getting. Instead of Adele. <laughs> <laughs> They actually want to ban. Wow. Does they back on that? Yeah. I was trying not to make it. Sort of level bottom. Yeah. It has to expand. Well, you wouldn't want to drive a Ford to a Chevy plant. Would That's it? right. My brother does it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that. Is he in security? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we are happy with this, that is a great, uh, we're in a great place, and we could wrap this up and move on to the articles. We need to vote on this, right? Okay, yeah. Do I hear a motion to? Uh, I move to, ex to accept. accept the <coughs> Appropriations Committee report for fiscal year 2020 as presented. I will second. Any last discussion points? 
thank you to the staff for all that yes. work. Yes, thank this you. Was great. Yeah, thanks, um, guys. Usually used to be uh, our uh, work. It was nice to have you guys take over. All right, ready for a vote. All those in favor of accepting the uh, uh, town report, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. It carries. I just emailed the report to Pam and uh, she has questions. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's no standing. She <laughs> no standing with us. She's probably trying to watch. Okay, so we have the report and the report is is why this broadcast is not live but recorded yes. so that she could not mail in questions. Right. So are we up to uh, approving the article? Or correct. Then you're ready to go. I think we have about nine items to go through. Is correct. That? Correct. So uh, of the total 31 articles that the AC will take position on, 22 have been approved, nine are open. Um, I passed out uh, the most recent draft of the Warren Articles and Motions. Um, before we I have two. Yes. I have two. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I have two. Okay. Yes. So, the yeah. items to approve are Article 2, to sub approve, to, that it remain. To remains consider? to be approved. Consider, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. <We're laughs> My apologies. Consider for <laughs> to consider for approval. Um, our Article 2, uh, Supplemental Appropriations and Transfers, um, and that is hot off the presses for a transfer of $525,000 from free cash to fund snow and ice, the FY19 snow and ice um, budget deficit and then $70,000 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund um, retained earnings to fund a FY19 estimated. estimated FY19 deficit. So I have a question. Are we still doing the quick method or should we just move it as, as written in the... I move that we have a standing motion to approve. I'll second that. So I thought I had the latest copy, but my copy doesn't have the seventy thousand. Uh, it's you down the, below. So they're, they're just down below. Oh, down below here. It's not in the that. text. Um, okay, yes. got it. It was under my finger as I was pointing. <laughs> <laughs> so can we? Can we just? I know we're doing the quick method last time, and we have to go back and do it as it is in the motions document. Can we just approve each one as written in the motions? in the Warrant Articles and Motions document this time, so we kind of can just do it the official way so we don't have to go back and do the other ones again? Because right, you were telling us that we do have to go back and do the other ones. Um, we didn't have a motions document. So no, no, I, I'm told, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the motions themselves are to be voted on, the amounts and the articles are what need to be voted on, and there were no changes to the amounts um, from the last meeting of the items that were approved, so we would not need to go back. Okay. Okay. So Article 2 is before you. Yeah, there, there would need to be a vote on that. Yeah, so you can do ask for any. Do we someone second it already? Uh, yeah, Wayne yeah. voted for the standing motion, or okay. he, he seconded the standing motion. We haven't voted on that, though. Okay. Um, any discussion on supplemental appropriations and transfers? Well, I think, I think second I think standing motion. Yeah, we have a, motion. Motion. Yeah, we have a second on the standing motion, so we need okay. to vote on the standing motion, and then we can get into these. Okay. All right. Discussion on the standing motion. Ready for? You look at me like ready for a vote. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor of the standing motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Four zero. Motion carries. I think now you're on Article Two. Correct. So the total would be five twenty-five plus the seventy. Correct. Five twenty five from free cash, seventy thousand from sewer fund retained earnings. Okay, so the actual language will get changed then in here to reflect the um uh, yes, correct. Yeah. That that was added by um, my colleague that, that it will be reviewed by council to add the language for the sewer enterprise fund. Okay. Wish for a vote. All those in favor of Article 2, Supplemental Appropriations and Transfers, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 to 0, the motion carries. 
next item is Article 3, unpaid bills from prior fiscal years. Two different bills, one from Parks and Recreation, the other from Information Technology for a total of $2,352.32. This is coming from Parks and Rec? No. Both. And IT. It's coming from free cash. So the so language says transfer from, from Park. So from free. free cash for the following bills occurring the previous year. Yeah, but it says from Parks and Rec retained Enterprise earnings. retained uh, okay. earnings. Okay, right. And 146 from free cash. From free cash. So it's yeah. one and one. Yeah. Uh, the 2200 comes <coughs> from the enterprise retained earnings and the $146 okay. on free cash. That must be a record for the, for the general fund prior year bills, $146. That's pretty low. Uh, no, we did it in the no, special, yeah. special meeting. Well, you know. <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, we like still six have bucks some. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a motion for this? You don't need no, a motion. We got the standing motion. Okay. okay. So. Ready for a vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Article 3 unpaid bills from previous years say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0 motion carries. Next item is the fiscal 2020 budget. Article 10. Article 10. I will make a um, small observation that um, on page seven uh, there is a estimated tax levy um, subsidy of $157,000 for Parks and Recreation that was actually reduced to approximately $149,000 um, so that will offset in the um, local receipts intergovernmental revenue and tax levy um, so there'll be no net change to the the budget but it will change those two buckets and that's incorporated in the Appropriation Committee report, but unfortunately, did not make it to this document yet. So say that again, then, because I was looking so, for the numbers. On sure. This. So on, on page seven, there is <laughs> yeah. a uh, tax levy under Parks and Recreation for one hundred fifty-seven thousand yeah. dollars. The accurate number is approximately one hundred forty-nine thousand. So it, it was reduced slightly. Okay. There will be an offset to the the top local receipts, intergovernmental revenue, and tax levy. In the interest of full disclosure. I'm sorry. What's the offset? Uh, local receipts, inter intergovernmental revenue, and tax levy. So at the very top of the page. Okay. Oh, there it is. So that offset is saying that we're going to collect eight thousand dollars less. Correct. What is that top number? Really? Yeah. Eight, Eighty-five. Seven. 790092, right? Is that right, Ben? Yes. Yeah. So that brings everything in line below 2.5%? Yeah. Uh, no, it, it stays. There, there's no net impact. <laughs> they, they were basically, and the, the idea was that, um, you know, we want to conservatively estimate local receipts, and there was a okay. little bit of movement there, um, okay. and some firmer numbers came in for Parks and Recreation. All right. Sometimes I think we do that right before town meeting so the overall numbers don't change and we don't have to re-vote everything <laughs> if yeah. the numbers stay the same but we shift things around a bit. So we don't have to reprint everything. This is small pages. As an FYI, um, we've, we've spent the last six months working with the Park and Drive Commission on how best to estimate their revenues, how best to account for their actual revenues. And we're continuing that conversation also in relation to when the revenues come in and when they're actually reflected in our uh, accounts. Um, and what you, are, what you are hearing from Ben is partially a result of that effort. Uh, we can share with you that when we submitted our, the town's uh, accounts to DOR uh, this year, we were almost at risk um, simply because of how um, DOR was questioning Park and Red's methodology for calculating its revenues. And that stands across all enterprise funds. 
So all of our uh, all of our enterprise funds are um, examined mm -hmm. uh, by the DOR at the tax uh, rate setting process. Okay. So. so does a change in the number you just gave us from local receipts change the number for general fund? Uh, overall, no, uh, because l looking at the, it, it's an expense on the general fund side, and then so we change the expense side and the revenue side on the general fund that there's a net impact of, of zero. So I think that there would be a slight change to the pro the, the eighty-seven million one hundred forty thousand seven hundred fifty-two as well on the page six to the general fund. Right. right. So it would be an offset offsetting change. So. As long as we're talking about Article 10, I want to bring up that last night I did bring our concerns to the Board of Selectmen, and one of the items that we had thought was a concern was the use of free cash, mm -hmm. the $257,000 uh, to use that for operation, the uh, operating budget. And uh, Norman uh, had a response saying, I guess it was probably my fault I took a liberty to say that kind of push the point of using free cash for the uh, operating budget that uh, that it's used you know if, if we don't have this free cash we're using it to fund salaries for for personnel and things like that and, and I probably shouldn't have gone that far I was trying to make the point that it's le there's less flexibility you know when you're using free cash and if we don't have it the next year but Norman did correct me that I apologize that if, it's not necessarily salaries that 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 is funding. There, there's other expenses in the, in the operating budget. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think it's one of those. You know, you got a bucket of water. <coughs> you know, you can pour, you can pour some more water in it and give some to the horses and some to the cows, and they're all getting the same water. It's not, you know, some from the water that was already there and some from another cup that was in there. But yeah, I understand. What you're saying. How about the gold? <laughs> the goats are another story. <laughs> you gotta bring in the guys, goats, huh? The guys getting it together. I, I just use fungible in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I have to explain that word that you sent earlier, <laughs> too. So, do we need to? I feel like it, I don't know exactly know what the numbers are that we're voting on, and I'm a little uncomfortable right now doing that um, because what we're, what we're looking at isn't the final numbers. I think it is the final number. Well, the but yeah. so we just need to, I just need to understand what they are. So you told us the 87 is going to change or no to the general fund, or is that not going to change? Um, so change. change. So, yeah. This Parks number change. It's going to change. It's going to go down $8,000. $8, so it'll be a 797.092.27. Okay. And then the Parks and Rec. Right. We got that. That's done. Yeah, that goes right. down. But this doesn't impact the general fund. That was my question. I thought you said that the 87 for the general fund is actually going. It's not because it's not an a, it's not an appropriation. I mean, okay. it's not a budget. It's a transfer. Okay. It's a I subsidy. On that, I so it, it it's a it's a dollar issue. The dollars are being are being provided through the tax levy, but we're not budgeting it. It's just a okay. transfer, a direct appropriation yep. subsidy. Okay. To the pocket and right at the price. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. That is what about it. Thank you. So you're saying the general fund total of eighty seven million does not change? That's what I was asking. It does not. Ready for a vote on the operating budget? All those in favor, Article 10, the fiscal 2020 operating budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. The next item is Article 11, uh, 2020 revolving spending limits. If you recall, I think there was a question about what the three public works. Uh, funds were and Dave provided that at the end of the meeting the last time, but we didn't vote on it Or you didn't vote on it I can reiterate what those can are if Yes, street, can, can you street tell opening? Uh, waste uh, for for uh, bags 
uh, collection, uh, sale of bags, and recycling. Is a bigger number than recycling, the 15,000? That's a good question. I, I can't. That's okay. the question. Can't so say. There's, there's two 8,000 and there's one 15,000. I just wonder which one had the higher amount. DPW. Street. It's most likely the recycling because re yeah. the yeah. recycling is uh, mm -hmm. cost now where before it used to be. Yeah. We used to get money for it. Right. Right. So it costs us money to recycle now. But less money and than the, it was because you have to transport it now. Yeah. Because <laughs> Used to make a return on, yeah. on yeah. some of the. No, I saw, saw one of the reports on the news a few weeks ago. Too many people not cleaning out their peanut butter jars. <laughs> you know, it takes you peanut butter jars. Yeah, all that wish cycling. That sounds like a three biz story coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for a vote? Article 11, revolving fund spending limits. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0, the motion carries. So the next item is Article 15, establishment of school department stabilization fund except for the fourth paragraph of MGL Chapter 40, Section 5B. So essentially this outlines the creation of a stabilization fund um, for the school department uh, around impacts of new growth. Um, it will move a, a $500,000 um, payment that was made from Legacy Farms as part of the host community agreement um, because a number of students enrolled from Legacy Farms reach a certain level, so a payment was made of $500,000. This article would create the stabilization fund, transfer $500,000 from the received reserve fund into the stabilization fund, and simultaneously transfer $200,000 out of that stabilization fund to assist, appropriate. to appropriate um, $200,000 out of the stabilization fund to assist the school in um, payments related to impacts on that growth. Um, and then it also, um, dictates that not less than 25% of all receipts from a private source, including any receipts to the Legacy Farms Agreement, um, received after July 1 are transferred directly to the department's school department stabilization fund. For Can you explain that in more detail? I don't know what that means. So Specifically, who has the ability to take, does it have to go to town meeting to take funds well, out of the stabilization fund? Well, I'm, just, I'm just wondering yes. that the money that goes into this fund mm -hmm. Is it only going to be money from the Legacy Farms Agreement, or is this fund going to be there for future use as well? So, it's only for the impact of um, increased enrollment um, from Legacy Farms. Okay. So, in that Legacy Farms Agreement, there's the five hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. That money, I don't know. I, I can't tell if all of it or some percentage of it is going to go in there. If there's another agreement down the road with a different development um, and that development says, okay, we're going to put money in for increased enrollment, it doesn't go into this fund. It this, can. It, it can. Yes. Okay. How about if the schools just say, we yeah. want more money for stabilization for increased enrollment? Can they ask town meeting for it and have it go in this fund? If town meeting decides to, yes, they can. But I believe the intent of doing this was to resolve an issue with Legacy Farms, how the how the money gets transferred, I believe, or else it would go right to the general the town's general fund, and that's why yep. they're doing this. I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out the limitations of the use of, of the stabilization fund, its sources and use. Um, so that we're not just looking at it from a standpoint of, okay, this lets us accept legacy farms and get the money where it's intended to go. Okay. Um, you know, what else can it be used for? So I think Norman can correct me, but I think the 500 flows into the bucket, 200 flows out for use in the near term through appropriation. 300 stays in there. If we get subsequent payments from legacy farms, they go in there. Mm -hmm. and then they could be appropriated out of there by town meeting. 
if there is another source of revenue, it can go in there and then be appropriated out mm -hmm. again. So this becomes the holding tank for that purpose. I don't really know why the town would appropriate general funds into the bucket and out of the bucket, but it could happen. Right, and that's what I'm trying to get to is, right. you know, is that something that's a possibility for, in the future? Yeah, you can. Yeah, in, in fact, I thought Mr. Sestari's question was along the lines similar to how we've appropriated money previously into the general stabilization fund. Can the same happen in this case? Exactly. Yes. It can happen, but it's not necessarily the intent of yes. what we're doing. Yeah. I understand intent. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what can happen. <laughs> so, so is the, is the uh, school department tracking individual? Like, how are they calling out the impact specifically, like legacy farms? Are they actually tracking the number of yes. children that there, and the increase versus projected, and what the impact of that is? In like, how do you break out an incremental cost for? Yeah. In fact, um, credit is due to the town for its foresight, identifying the likelihood of a significant number of mm -hmm. kids coming from legacy farms. Uh, the town did the same thing with regard to legacy farms' impact on other town services, police, fire, and so forth. With regard to the school department, there were specific thresholds identified in a host community agreement, yeah. i.e. if they are if there's an additional three, I'm just giving out numbers. If yeah. there's an additional 300 students coming from legacy farms, the developer will address that impact or mitigate that impact by providing X dollars. And those X dollars are based on agreement, they're not computed. So you asked, how do you determine the marginal cost? That's not part of this process. It was a negotiated amount or a. But wouldn't that be part of the process amount? to draw from this? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And I think that's. Okay. That, that's why the, the motion, if you read the motion closely, is written the way it is. There is consideration that at some point the, 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 the impacts of additional students from legacy farms is, a, is felt system-wide. For example, there may be a need to increase the size of kitchens <laughs> uh, in this case. I'm just using a very, very simple issue taking a very simplistic approach to this. Yeah. And thus, as long as that the addressing that issue is related, is related to... Then you can draw from this. Exactly, book. yes. Thank, thank you. So I, I, do, I do like the structure for the legacy farms transfer. I think that it's something where, you know, the school committee should be in control of, you know, this, this bit of money that's supposed to be offsetting some of these impacts. Um, I'm wondering though if we got, and while I understand it may not be the intent of this, but if we get to the point where it starts being funded um, through taxpayer contributions, first of all, I guess what's the it's it's all determined it's all determined by the school committee whether the cost is related to increased enrollment correct it is identified described and presented to town meeting by the school committee because okay. yeah i think this needs to be understood clearly so if this is a three step process yeah so town so if so if Let's just let's just say that let's just say that you know town meeting uh, school the school committee um, you know gives a compelling argument to town meeting town meeting approves that okay we should be funding ourselves we should be funding this uh, this stabilization fund for a million dollars you know for increased enrollment that's unexpected so two years down the road and the school committee sees something you know and that million dollars is still sitting there the school committee sees something that they want to spend three hundred thousand dollars on it's solely up to their decision correct it's not going to anyone else to determine 
is that really due to increased enrollment or not? It's, again, it's, you know, building the case is the responsibility of the school committee. Mm -hmm. Town meeting decides whether to move forward or whether to go along with the... Okay, so the use yes. of the stabilization yeah. fund requires a vote at town meeting? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Two-thirds. Yes. Two -thirds. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Same, same, same appropriation as the so other back stabilization fund. So we're at the meeting, mm -hmm. too. This was not the school committee's first choice. No. They wanted the stabilization fund for them, and they wanted to be able to use it without at, at their discretion, without having to go to yep. town meeting. I'm just this, trying to understand was, it. Yeah, no. This is... Because they go, what if we need it right now? Now they have to, they have to. Yeah. It's more formal. It has to go in front of town meeting. Yeah. It has to be approved. Okay. So this is, Norman. This is what you, basically, what you wanted, or, or it was a compromise. It was a compromise. And if it's middle of the year, and if it's middle of the year, this is good for yeah. the people of the town. And if it's middle of the year and it requires a special, then that has to get through uh, the board of selectmen even to get the special. Right. So no, I agree. Yeah. It, I I just wanted to make sure I understood. Yeah. And again, this, this really reflects a collective effort um, by our colleagues um, in the school department mm -hmm. as well as uh, the town side. And if, if there's money in there and, you know, after, you know, whatever, it's noticed that the school population has peaked and it's been, you know, declining for the last seven years, um, the process to get money out of there and put back into the general fund, that's, I assume, just another, it's another town meeting vote. Is that exactly? Okay. Um, okay. Is it? A little more complicated than just a town meeting vote. Yeah, no. <laughs> you have to petition to dissolve, to dissolve the stabilization. Okay. Is that's there also an issue? At the yeah. state level. Is there also an issue because this is legacy farms providing this money that if it doesn't get used for the schools, it still has to be used for that purpose of due to I'm not worried about the initial 500000 being used. <laughs> I'm wondering about future funding, you know, and, and possibly getting that back. I'm, you know, I, it's a good question, but I'm, I'm sure that that initial 500000 will be used. Yeah. I, I, again, you may want to just take a look at the, the actual motion. It does identify clearly um, the, the purpose of the stabilization fund. Okay. okay. Ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article 15, establishment of the school department stabilization fund, say aye. 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 Opposed? So the next item is Article 16, uh, transfer to OPEG liability trust fund in the amount of $400,000. You know, I mean, I see this is, you know, a vote of, you know, do you, <laughs> do you vote, you know, saying, yeah, we're going to take what we can get, or do you vote your conscience and say, no, this isn't enough? <laughs> well, then we would like have to do a, want it more to a counter motion or some sort. I don't know. Right, there's a way to do it. There's a way to. We would have to propose another. And this is, motion. we're sponsoring this or no? I, we, make, we make the motion, but it's already in the budget. It's already in the budget. I mean, I did bring it up in my yesterday in the the selectmen. They listened to it, and I, nobody said, "Gee, we ought to raise it up." I know Norman did agree that it is underfunded this year, and um, but. The, requ the request from the Board of Selectmen was 2.5%, so by raising it, we make it higher than 2.5%. I mean, I'm confident we are calling it out. Well, comfortable, not completely, but I think we are calling it out, so. Yeah. It has gotten attention. We are going to mention it. Yep. When we bring the motion, can we say we voted for it to zero, but we feel like this is underfunded? Can we say that in the motion? I won't say that in the motion. I can say that as part of my yeah, summary, my presentation at the yeah. beginning. And yeah. it's been a common theme for the last couple of years. I guess years. I look at the two as 
we do have the recommendation. This is more the mechanical procedural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then I think from there, uh, you know, somewhere between June and September, I think our board needs to get together mm -hmm. to discuss this and other recommendations for next year's budget, and uh, and make them more make those requests more formalized in October and November when the budget process is getting started, as opposed to waiting to the end. Mm -hmm. um, and this and this you know 625 request turns into an 850 request to make up for the other 225 that was missed this year plus another three percent um, you know just to catch up so but that's yeah I mean I, I agree with you guys I think it's you approve it now just because we know we need to keep funding this but we need to start making our recommendations earlier in the budget process but we, I think every year we do say this every time that when you go through what are, what are our recommendations on, I don't know, is it even September, October, we said uh, open to be funded. I think every year we do say that at the beginning. But as I said in my yesterday, it tends to be the first thing, as soon as you have to cut it, whittle it down, it's the first yeah. thing that's cut. Maybe it's during the message, during the budget message meeting. You know, I mean, I know that yeah. the budget message is primarily geared toward the operational component. Um, but, you know, trying to get the Board of Selectmen to create a message saying, okay, you know, holding the taxpayer impact to, you know, 3% while also, uh, you know, following actuarial recommendations and funding OPEB, general stabilization, you know, whatever we, whatever else, and we try to push for that. And that was kind of the, the question that one of the Selectmen asked was, should we, between the using free cash for the operational budget, which is basically the same amount we're underfunding OPEB, yes, well, either Norm or myself, well, should we just put that 257000 in, you know, by raising you know, the tax levy? And I kind of left it up to the, yeah. so he, he probably wanted us to say it, it probably still would have changed, but I think it would have raised it to, he's at 2.75%. 2.7% instead of 2.5, and I was because we, we hadn't really discussed. Uh, it was just it was discussed either you cut other things out to keep it at 2.5, or you raise the lab levy. Those are the two choices. And I I, I could have said yes, raise it, and I probably would have felt more comfortable. But I'm sure there are a lot of taxpayers who would be not happy with that. So, uh, and I don't think the selectmen. They didn't really debate it. They didn't want to. They didn't discuss it yeah. much. They asked the question, but they didn't discuss it. So I don't think it would really happen. And I think by just suddenly saying we're going to put 625 in here, it's just going to send us back to the board of select and we're going to push back on it. Mm -hmm. But again, I'll just say for the record, these are good times. Yeah. This is when we actually have the money. We can say we got to catch up next year, and we could. And New growth could have tanked, and we might not have. Them. And I said that to them. Yeah. Too. I yeah. did say that too. That these are these are good times. Right. Okay. Are we ready for any other discussion on Article 16? Ready for a vote on Article 16? Transfer to OPEP. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Four zero. It carries. So the next item is Article 23, Sidewalk Master Plan Phase 2. And this was originally brought forward as, as 1.8 million. Um, after discussion with the Board of Selectmen last night, um, they voted um, to reduce that to $1,060,000. Um, and they set the proposed sidewalks are on West Main Street from Lumber Street to Downey Street, and on Wood Street from Proctor Street to Walker Street. What was the vote? Uh, uh, three to two. Three to two on both. What article was this? Twenty-three. Could you Correct. Okay. Well, actually, this is a borrowing, a so we're not actually yeah. seeing it in this year's budget. So, after all that discussion, they go, well, "How's impact the budget?" And the answer is, it doesn't. Not this year. Not this year. So, um, about one hundred twenty thousand dollars starting in twenty twenty-one for some. Term of the, correct. Well, so they took off Wild Road and Hayden Row and 
Correct. West, West Main Street and Wood Street. Correct. So I wanted to see this, you know, cut roughly in half, and, and it is. Um, I am from that other side of town, and uh, I would have preferred to see the sidewalk swapped, and yeah. I'd prefer to see, you know, the, the ones that aren't being funded now funded. Um, I don't particularly see. That maybe maybe it's lack of insight, but I just don't. Feel that there's going to be a huge benefit from the sidewalks that are being proposed. Uh, I plan to vote against this, um, but that's my own opinion. Yeah, Something. yeah. I actually see because I drive by it every day, and yeah. I do see people walking to, to Price Chopper or, or the stores there. And it, yes, they are walking through the grass or the weeds, and it just it. it I think that's one of the highest areas for car accidents yeah. in that yeah. area. So I think we do need sidewalks. But to Todd's point, it must have been a, 20 minutes of discussion, half hour discussion, everyone had a different opinion. And it was almost down to just doing a segment of Wood Street for $100,000. And I was going to say, what's the point? <laughs> you know, I don't even know. How much does that buy you? That, that, was, that was the least expensive yeah. stretch to do, but it was. But where does it go? It, 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 it helps get you out to. It goes to the church and the DPW. It's the DPW. <laughs> so they can get their. Uh, so can get, I the never see anybody. You can get the new tractor yeah. to the center of town without. Like, I guess the, they said the goal was to make a sidewalk all the way to the Fruit Street Fields, but so and then the, who's, who's going to walk from uh, the center yeah, of town no. to the Fruit Street Fields? That's a that's a pretty long walk. But it's just so much argument. To what's important? What's needed? What's not? I was almost like <laughs> bike lane on the on the road instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was what it really important everyone had a different opinion that some some everyone thought different people thought each part was not important yeah you know, so you put you kind of sum it all up yeah what was the need for any of them it was all right but but that's not necessarily that's not necessarily <laughs> my view but i do think it is it is, it is for safety and, and wasn't this like the number one issue did someone say at the last meeting in the master for people when they do a, it was a parks and rec or a town, what services or what you feel yeah. are the best, would be the best improvement for the town and the sidewalks, whatever we're number one. Sidewalks and bike paths. We ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article 23, the sidewalk master plan of $1,060,000, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Three one. Motion carries. And your reason was Todd. Um, I just don't think that the sidewalks that they're going to be doing are the right ones. So the next item is Article Twenty Nine: Center School Renovation and Reuse Feasibility Study and Repairs. And $58,000. Sorry, Ben, which article yeah, is number this? What number is it? 29. 29. 29. So this $59,000 is $58,000 is only to study the proposed uh, reuses within municipal uses, correct? The article so says, and to perform necessary repairs. So I think that's the legal outer limit of the money. Is that, is that you agree to that? So Norman, yeah. um, this was never discussed. I don't know if it was Dave. This, was, this never came up in any of our meetings with department heads. Do you have more background on when this came up or what this is about? Yes. Um, the motion moving forward will be asking for $58,000 to complete a feasibility study for the future uses at Center School. Background information. The selectmen formed an advisory team that uh, consulted with the public and residents on the future of Center School. That advisory team provided recommendations 
identifying future uses at center school as continuing the municipal use. And when the recommendation was presented to the selectmen, the selectmen said, well, it's important that perhaps before making the final decision, they understand the financial and engineering implications of the recommendation. That matter was then forwarded to the Permanent Building Committee, who now are working with a structural engineer uh, and a costing consultant to then provide that financial and engineering recommendation to the select. The $58,000 will go towards that. Initially, when the process started, we had also identified some major league issues regarding some ongoing maintenance issues at Centre School. And the idea was to, well, since the town desires to continue the municipal uses, and also since other town departments have already stepped into Centre School and are using, for example, the gym and the classrooms for programs that need to be held this summer, yeah, this summer, um, we felt there were some repairs that we absolutely needed to take care of. That piece is not in this article anymore. What we have done is we've gone back to Jay and Dave and said, take a look at your current budgets and see how perhaps you could address those issues through your FY19 budget. So the piece in here that says, um, I'm sorry, and perform, uh, necessary and perform necessary repairs, is that something that's going to be struck out at town meeting? No, that's in the article. If you read the motion, the motion is different. It says, and to perform necessary repairs on center school buildings in the motion. We fired this this afternoon. Only identified the 58,000. We will fix that. We will fix that okay. before we finalize it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I want to put that in the motion for it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. yeah, it's right after the U17420, right after that. Oh, right in the format, sir. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. in both yeah, the we'll article that. description and the motion. Yeah, we'll okay. fix that in the motion. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's something that the study, in my opinion, it's something that needs to be done for people to make an informed decision. Um, so this, I'm assuming that this study is the result of it is going to take a look at different uses, uh, different modifications to the building, and yes. and give ballpark estimates as to what it would cost to get there? Yes, much more refined estimates. So yeah. in the end, after this, when we come around to town meeting next year, and we've had some municipal departments using that building for two years at that point, um, and people are pushing one way or another, we're going to have a number that says, okay, if we want to keep using it, you know, for this, this, and that purpose, you know, the recommendation is we, you know, knock down this part, we renovate this part, you know, yada, 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 and it's going to cost this amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's what we get for $58,000. Exactly. And that's what okay. this is happening. Yep. But the 58000 is not going toward the repair of the heating system. No or anything like that. This is for the feasibility study. Okay. Would this be a motion to approve as amended? No. As amended? We will. F the motion document is not final. It's still in its draft form. Okay. Yes. But so we, we should wait. And we, can, we can vote on this the night of town meeting uh, for, I, for our recommendation. I can firmly say that the, the motion will, we intended to do this this afternoon. Right. I don't know how we missed it. So if we can do it now yeah. and say... Pinky, pinky swear? Yes. As amended. <laughs> As amended. I think that will be sufficient, right? And then we'll amend it before the report's released. Does that sound right to you? Correct. Um, is this, will this include engineering studies as well? So that they do want to, like, is this, this isn't getting to the design phase, so this is just kind of looking at. This is just a more accurate ballpark like than the yeah. ballpark we had. Yeah. From yeah. The so then there will potentially be another feasibility study to get to a design phase, or no? Or do you think this no. is going to cover it? 
this yeah this is the feasibility study okay. that can then lead to depending on the decision right to a detailed Design. engineering okay. study okay yeah and we we, we may it's gonna take forever plenty of money to go around <laughs> yeah. or you know it could lead to some other outcome exactly. right we may yeah. consult you we know we know you have extensive experience and knowledge of this building <laughs> exactly. many exactly. times we walk so this isn't building. enough to cover what's going to need to be done if you're going to <laughs> well, did you hear the rough estimate? No. Was it 17 million? Yeah, 15, 17 million. Mm. Mm. That's one of Nice condos. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And think of the taxes and you know that that yeah. will bring in. Yeah. And all the new people going downtown to eat. Right. You won't be able to take over. All right, anyways. Well, that's we not in our debt ground. So we can't, are we going to vote as amended <laughs> or we're exactly. going to wait to vote? I, I can do the motion. I mean, we're working this is getting rid of the school. We move so to let the town vote to raise an appropriate 58,000 to conduct a feasibility study on the reuse and renovation of the center school located at 11 R Street, Hopkinton, shown as assessor's map U1742-0. Said sum to be spent under the direction of the permanent building committee. So that's how it's amended. Okay. Right. Yes. Are ready to a vote as amended? Yes. All those in favor of the Center School Renovation and Reuse Visibility Study say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. And the final item is Article 51. I believe we talked about speaking the article to adjourn. Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the municipal parking. Um, discuss it. Who came up with this? <laughs> yeah, we should have thought of this sooner. <laughs> yeah, you did. You just had it for some reason. Maybe I took Page 46. 46. Yeah. Do you have it? Do you have my copy? Do you like not give me a page? Just to the one way. Can you send my copy down to me? I just need a 45, 46. 46, 47. So you need. So this this would be an item to be discussed in executive session. Yeah. In fact, I, I can simply give a global explanation as to what is happening. Um, so we need to do this in the executive session? No, no, no. I, I, I'm not getting into details. I'll simply give a global explanation. Okay. Yeah. Um, over the years, there has been discussion regarding parking in the downtown area. The, we have also had discussions regarding the needs for parking here at town hall. And so, going forward, relative to this upcoming town meeting, there will be the following articles. There will be an article addressing the direct town hall parking needs. There will also be an article addressing the general municipal parking needs in the downtown area. There are parcels that have been identified to support both articles. In addition, come the election, there will be a ballot question asking townspeople to either support or not support the funding to support these two options. Namely, the option to identify parking for town hall. The par town hall is no parking. People always assume that this is public. It's not. Um, we only have a few spaces, I think, along this boundary line um, from the building all the way to the to the shed. Mm -hmm. We both articles referencing the the acquisition of either land uh, for the town hall parking needs or the general municipal needs would give the options for purchase, lease eminent domain. 
Selectmen, town manager, they've been directly involved in the negotiations with different property owners around town hall, along Main Street, and we believe that uh, there will be more specific information available as we go towards town meeting. I'll just say, last night I was at town meeting and the Why chamber. Because there was no town meeting. I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or selectman's meeting. Same thing. I know. <laughs> um, and one of, the, one of the public comments came from Ron Foise, representing the Chamber of Commerce. And another one also came from uh, the owners of the Muffin House. And just the concern with the uh, downtown corridor project starting in the coming year and what, how that's going to affect parking for the current uh, business owners. And, uh, you know, really just kind of urging for there to be some type of resolution, preferably in place, if not at least in the works, uh, you know, to, to start easing their concerns because that's going to be a multi year project mm -hmm. that's coming out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt a lot of. So are these amounts, the amounts you think you need, or is this is just gives the town it's manager the like the leeway to, to negotiate? There will be amounts discussed. Um, I understand, just based on the negotiations, that the amounts for the parcel addressing the parking, the town hall parking needs, uh, will be made public very soon as soon as we sign a purchase and sale agreement, that information then becomes public. Um, the, the numbers for one of the general municipal parking um, solutions have been discussed in public. Um, I believe they're discussed in, during one of the selectmen's meetings. Um, the, the numbers for the last option have not been discussed in public, but should be available soon. Um, with regard, I should mention this, with regard to the general municipal parking needs, uh, we anticipate that this will be a two-step process. The town will issue an RFP, invite proposals, um, having, having, having gone to town meeting and having the election decided whether there will be money to support that RFP or not. So in other words, if, if, if the vote at town meeting and at the election is affirmative, then the town will issue an RFP. If the votes don't support the proposals, then the town will not issue the RFP. Um, sorry if you answered this in your comments before, but um, for this money, roughly how many parking spaces do we think we're going to get? It's tough to say. Was that a bad question? Let <laughs> <laughs> I me mean, affect the negotiating position. It's, it's a good time. question. That's yeah. why it yeah. can't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might affect the negotiating position of the town. Okay. Do we anticipate using eminent domain, or is that just part of the boilerplate? It's part of the boilerplate. Um, and, and, and we always discuss that component with the property owners. Namely, if we run into a title issue, it's much easier to resolve it through eminent domain. And, and this is, how is this going to be funded? This is going to be borrowed? This is one of the it's about questions so we're going to borrow it. Yes. And this will be excluded then. Do we need to vote on this tonight or can we vote on this after things are more public and we have more information? Yeah, yeah I believe perhaps this should wait until uh, yeah. the next meeting, either before town meeting. Yeah. Yes. So, so is this already a, a ballot question? Yes. Can we put any money toward this through CPC? No. Passive recreation. Passive recreation. Passive recreation. Parking to go shop. He's a street hog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to preserve the historic nature of town hall. Yeah, to exactly. Yeah. Historic. Yeah. Well, when the, the, the road work is complete, after the quarter is complete, we put trees back and, or resell it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, be open that's, space. that's why we need it. Yeah. yeah. There's no better open space than a parking lot. Yeah. 
think there was a song <laughs> to that effect. That's <laughs> right. Political <laughs> part. No. Any more discussion? Are we ready for vote on this? Or we're not going to we're not going to defer. Okay. We're at the end of the whole. Uh, affirmed. Yes. Awesome. So are we done? So we would amend the one motion in the report and then we would release the report and publish the report. Are you you've approved the report so you're good with yep. putting it out not tomorrow? Yet. The motion is not in the report. There. It's the it wasn't. That, okay. that service yeah, graph. Okay. That that service graph, does it uh, reflect the parking lot number? No. It does not reflect the parking lot numbers. But it will in the end. Uh, it doesn't today, and we're about to release it. Right. So, because we we don't have a number for it yet at right. this time, and we need to release the report to be timely. Mm -hmm. So we could probably disclose that verbally. Or yeah. Does it have to have it? So we will not put the numbers in, but it will have it by the time of town meeting. Right. But if I mean that's the nature of having a report sometime before the town meeting. There's going to be maybe things that happen because the report is as of now. Do we put a um, disclaimer or a placeholder or something in that same? We can do it right now. Um, I mean, I just don't know. I'm not uh, but but it ha hasn't happened yet. The parking thing hasn't happened yet, right? No. Or do we not? Yeah, no, it's, I think it's standard. We've done this before. We simply say the appropriations committee will take its position at our meeting. Yeah. That's good. And we can have a one, <laughs> we can have one page <laughs> yeah. amendment yeah. to the document. And okay. okay. Yeah, when we hand it out, we'll add it yeah. to that last page. Great. Got to that next page then. No. <laughs> so I guess you're down to minutes. I'm trying to find them. Who sent the minutes? Or who I said. Wait, but would it have been under you or under us? Allison? Allison. No, it was under me. That was under me. Four or eleven minutes? Yeah, mm -hmm. April 11th. When did I send them? Oh, I believe you sent on Thursday, April 18th. Yeah, I can just pull up a copy. I was going to say, yeah. I just pulled up an old address for you. Wait, do I have an address for you? What's the old one? Dell? Dell, bad memory. <laughs> so I do want to bring it up. Um, it didn't get into the, the uh, did it get into the Google Drive? It was W. Pacheco at no, to point at gmail.com. There it is. Is that April? Yeah. I had things to do coming up. Okay. <laughs> okay, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for April 11th? I move to approve the minutes for the April 11th meeting. Minute, second, April. You can second. I second. Discussion? Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor of the April 11th, approving the April 11th meeting, minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. Motion passes. Or the minutes pass. The motion to approve the minute pass. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second it. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor of adjourning <laughs> say aye. 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 Do we need to have another meeting? Next week, do we need to set one up just in case, or? Uh... Yeah, just in case. Okay. okay. Late in the week. Okay. More is likely to be done late in the week, or Thursday? Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. 
Thursday is the second. So is that, are those days you cannot? Let's see, who cannot make Thursdays? So. Do Thursday. Hopefully you, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. oh. I will miss the second day of town meeting. Hopefully there is no second day of town meeting. Oh, oh right. of course there's going <laughs> to be. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm anticipating the third day. Third day. This yeah. 50, whatever. No, it's my daughter's 13th birthday, the lazy potato, so I've got to... Uh, it's a big one. Nice. No, it's not. It's no way. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be good. You know, I, I'm speaking to speaking about your presentation at town meeting. I was I was going to bring that up after. Exactly. I didn't know if uh, Tim was aware of it. I didn't want to spring well, it up. No, it's brand, it's brand news. It's good welcome yeah. news to me. Yeah. So okay. We'll I'll, jump on I'll talk to you after. Okay. Just great. After. And just uh, so the committee knows, I think we've also asked to do a. Um, Quick presentation on the building committee. The, the building committee wants to present the um, the school building committee wants okay. to do a quick presentation on the school and it being done and us being on the budget and stuff. So I'll probably be there as a representative on the on the committee for the AC for the Great. So, yeah. yeah. That, what that means is this: if they're on the budget, that means there's availability to grab that money. For future debt. <laughs> did, did you include them in the email when you asked them about any absolute balances? Um, I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a, because it's a, you can only use it for debt service. Exactly. So I just want to all pay as you go. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody.